Next time you come to Peckham and you're feeling hungry, this is the place to check out. Uh, the food is so amazing and they do have a bar as well. Welcome to Little Lagos also known as Peckham. As you all are very much aware by now, South London is big and South Londoners are not afraid to say it. It is unquestionably the most relevant part of the capital with the most interesting places, monuments, and people. Today we are going to dive into an area that could lay claim to be the capital of South London. Although Greenwich, Lewisham and Brixton would also also have a solid case. Peckham may have suffered from unfair reputation in the past, but today the town is a vibrant and elegant place to spend the day. Peckham was a small settlement of the parish of Camberwell, located about a mile to Camberwell's east on the road to New Cross. Now, there is some argument as to the meaning of the name Peckham, and how it came about. The area was called Pecheham in the Doomsday Book in 1086, which became Peckham by 1361. The name is Old English and translates as a homestead by the peak or hill, the hill in question being Telegraph Hill. On the other hand, some people state the name the place of the River Peck, a small stream that runs through the area. Peckham became popular as a wealthy residential or by the 16th century, and by the 18th century the area was a more commercial center that engrossed industrialists who wanted to avoid paying the high-priced rent in central London. Peckham also possessed extensive market gardens growing produce such as figs and melons for the local markets in London. Until the early 19th century, Peckham was rural area. However, vast development later in the century sparked major change. In the mid-19th century, a new district called Peckham New Town was built on land owned by the Hill family, centered on Peckham Hill Street. The family also gave its name to the area's main axis, Peckham Hill Road. Furthermore, the Rise F public transport proved to be the catalyst. For increased development with railways being fundamental alongside the introduction of horse-drawn trams. This encouraged much building of a more modest scale in almost any open space. With the Rye also threatened by development. The increase in accessibility created an influx of young affluent residents, which had a positive knock-on effect. Rye Lane became a major shopping street. Peckham still has a bad reputation that lingers, and it can be traced back to the 1970s when high unemployment and a lack of economic opportunities for residents led to the area's decline, with areas of Peckham being one of the most deprived in Western Europe. There was also, Increase in gang activity as well as the death of 10-year-old Damalola Taylor in 2000 contributed to Peckham's unfortunate reputation. On November 27, 2000, 10-year-old Nigerian pupil, Damalola Taylor, was killed in Peckham. Two brothers who were 12 and 13 at the time of the killing were convicted of manslaughter in 2006. Let us dig deeper into a brief understanding of Peckham. Peckham was mostly a farming community. On a 174 map, fields and small farms are shown with the main development being at the junction of South Street and Peckham Lane and the Peckham Road in the north. The boundaries of the common seem to be almost unchanged today. Goose Green and Nunhead Green were extensions of the common. Cattle drovers used Peckham Village as it was known then, as a stopping place before going on to the markets of London. Their herds were put out to graze in the common while they took refreshments at the various inns. From the late 18th century, the district became more developed. Good houses can be seen along Rye Lane, East Dulwich Road, and east and west side of the common. Thomas Tilling introduced a new bus service in 1851 that took passengers from Peckham to the West End. In 1865, the railway station opened in Rye Lane. 
With the railways came the speculative builders and soon the remaining fields and markets were built over and lost forever. Peckham has undergone significant gentrification for over 15 years plus. I have seen new housing, rooftop bars and restaurants. The house prices have gone up to a million pound bracket, luring outsiders to come in and check out the continuous gentrification in Peckham, southeast London. However, what we call progress comes with major concerns at times. The rising prices and displacement of long-time residents. North Peckham and Camden Estates were demolished along with the conventional tenement blocks of the Sumner Estate. The whole area is now looking lush, fresh and livable. I hope crime has gone down too. There's no denying, with all the development Peckham is still looking very rundown and gritty. We cannot pretend Peckham is a fantastic place especially the High Street and Rye Lane. The area is still crying for tons of money for the upgrade. Despite the development very few tourists come to Peckham. That said, I reckon the locals to Peckham are relishing Peckham as the most coolest place or neighborhood in the entire London. Why are there so many Nigerians in Peckham? The first wave of Nigerians settled in Peckham in the 1970s and 1980s, when the Nigerian economy plummeted, following the end of the oil boom era in Nigeria. Before this, the only immigrants living here were the Polish, who came over after the World War II. Economic and political strife in Africa during 1990 continued to send floods of Nigerians over. The initial Nigerians' arrivals established a little group, and people begun come. The market started selling plantains, and that was it. Nigerians started buying houses and renting rooms out, and helping their family members and friends to move up the family ladder. No one knows when the Nigerian community in Peckham was dubbed Little Lagos. Nigerians are business-minded. Nigerian shops offer several services under one roof. You will find a shop specializing in christening clothes, Holy Communion dress and men's suits, also offering photography and video services. You will find Nigerian shop offer barber service, doubling up as internet cafe, buy clothes and a hangout. Having everything in one place is an effective way for Nigerians to reach each other much faster. Nigerians are a business-minded breed. No need for billboards or heavy advertising. The Nigerian community is excelling in Little Lagos, Peckham. Thank you for watching and for your time. I will catch you in the next one. Little Lagos is one of the most multicultural places in London, Nigerians mix with Chinese, White Britons, Indians, Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, Caribbean, Thai, Turkish, Spanish and more. Is it safe to walk around Peckham? Honestly, Peckham is way safe these days. It is important not to like a victim. Know where you are going in advance. Do not go around flashing expensive stuff late at night and you will be fine. If Peckham has never been in your radar, it should be now. Peckham enjoys a sense of community along with affordable accommodation, great transportation links and a whole load of fantastic bars and restaurants and shops. Oh yes, they have a stunning park too. There is a mixture of property types for any needs, from singles who want something modern to traditional family-friendly homes. Off the Rye Lane, which is packed with businesses, is a part of neighborhood in high demand thanks to the quaint cottages. In Peckham North, you will find the younger population living in beautiful apartments above colorful shops. As I mentioned earlier food is a serious business in Peckham, with a ton dining options from many diverse cultures. Round Peckham are galleries, cafes, multicultural grocers, and a high street with old-fashioned shops. There's is also Peckham Famers Market each week that has some rare and unusual foods as well as a vast selection of organic produce and meats. For those who make the move, the Peckham Library is quite a popular among all age groups. Another additional feature that makes Peckham unique is it has got to be the BMX track. 
Has Peckham always been gritty? What I found shocking in Peckham is the litter, which is everywhere. It is as if everyone has stopped caring about anything in Peckham. Many buildings and shop front look horrendously dilapidated. I do realize these buildings are from the 1970s architecture, but that does not explain the dirt and exhausting graffiti on every single wall, doors, and windows. How do you explain that kind of behavior? Nobody cares. Gentrification is happening big time in Peckham, but it is not reflected at all in Rye Lane or the High Street. Since from the 1970s, Peckham has struggled to lift the face of its High Street and Rye Lane. One of the things that make a difference in poorer areas in London is the exact mix between people on low income, who have relatively stable employment and income and those who are really on the economic margin. In Lewisham, for instance, the balance between these two groups is much healthier, and it helps influence the area in modest ways. Lewisham was offered £19 million to lift the face of the high street. I will be visiting Lewisham soon. What I see happening in Peckham is the imbalance. The poorer areas have tilted towards the margins. The people with stable income have moved to other places in London. That has made a sharp and rough contrast in Peckham. People looking tranced in the morning is not a great reflection of a caring society. It's brutal and it is tough. Please share your thoughts with regards to Peckham. Share the video with friends, please.